Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, I have shown you quick overview on my cafe management system project. If you are not seen that video, just go to the description and check out the link. In this video, I am going to start with the backend part of this project. So first, we are going to complete all the BIV APIs of this project. Then we are going to work for the front end part. So let me talk about the software requirement for the backend. So first we need Visual Studio. So let me open the Visual Studio over here. You can see we are using Visual Studio 2019 version. Here you can see. And let me create a new project over here. So let me cl click on create a new project. And here you will see few options. So first you have to select over here C sharp. And then here you have to move a little bit down over here. And you can also search it like this. So ASP.NET with application, you have to write like this, this one. And here you can see, we got it, this one we need to. And then you have to click on next. And after that here, we have to rename the project. So cafe, I'm going to write here, cafe management system. I'm going to write like this. And I'm going to click on create. Now we have to click on this web API and we have to remove the HTTP yes from here and then we need to click on create. So it will create a project for us. So just we have to wait few seconds over here. You can see it's creating the, our project. And here you can see a project has been created. You can see the structure of this project. You can see the control is there, model is there, script is there. You can see the web config is there references over here so all you can see over here right and after that we have we need for this project is ms sql so let me open this one micro microsoft sql server management studio 18 version i'm using so let me open it and you can see this one version 18.9.2 i'm using sql server management studio and you can see there's a server name so let me click on connect you can see a server has been connected and if you extend this one you can see the databases right so this is these two software basically need to install in your system to work on the backend part of this project so let me move back over visual studio now we have to install few packages so right click on this one and here we have to move to this one package and you can also go it from here tools and if you go to the over this place and the second one from here both places you can go to that one okay so after that you have to move to the browse and here basically you have to need to write system dot identity t model token this one you need to select and dot jwt token so you can see the first uh, package you are seeing right now you have to select this one and after that you have to install this package actually so click over here and after that you have to click on install it will take few seconds or, to, or few minutes uh, to install this package so basically this package we are going to use for the jwt token so json wave token all these things we are going to use and okay so here it's asking to like uh, what are what are things we need to install so we have to just click on okay so it will install all these things in our project. After that, we also need to one add one more package. So chorus, that one. So let me clear this one. And here we need to write micro soft ASP.NET web dot course, this one. And we also need to install this one actually. So let me click on this one. Let me close this part. And here we need to click on install. So it will also going to ask just wait for few seconds now here you can see we have to just click on ok it will uh, it will also asking to accept this one license so i need to click on i accept and it will install you can see successfully so let me close this one package manager and let me also close this one and now we have to move to the uh, ms sql and here we are going to click on new uh, okay before going to new query we have to create a database so right click on this one databases and click on new database and here we have to create a new database so cafe uh, video we are going to write like this and we are going to click on ok and you can see a database has been created 
and now we have to create a table so i'm going to click on new query and here we have to write the query to create the table so here i'm going to write create table and the table name will be user and and it having some properties like in id int identity t and it should be one comma one and it should be primary primary key this one and after that name var care and it should be of uh, size 250 and after name contact number so var care var care we are going to make it as 20 after that email var care we are also going to make it as uh, uh, not 20 or uh, it's 50 and after that password where care we are making it as 250 and after that the status of that user so where care the status will be length of 20 and after that the rule for particular use uh, so we also need to store so it will be of size 20 and at last we put semicolon just select this query and you can see here we have selected the databases so cafe videos i'm going to click on it and i'm going to execute it okay it's giving us some kind of error so user okay it's giving us some user just write users and try to execute it you can see it has been created user already exists that's the reason it's giving us error the system or okay so user table has been created let me refresh it over here so refresh it and if we extend the tables you can see dbo.users exist over here so now we are going to create one more like uh, insert query so insert like admin credentials we are going to insert so insert into users this one table and here we have to insert name contact number email this one and the password we need to insert and after that status we also need to insert and the rule yep we need to insert it and the values whatever the value respected to this uh, fields we also need to insert so here we need to write uh, admin first and after that we enter, need to enter the contact number so it will be one two three four four five six seven eight nine zero and after that we have to enter the email address so admin at the rate gmail.com and after that uh, the next the password i'm also going to set as admin and after the password the status will be true as this user will be able to log in and the rule i'm going to write here admin and at last i'm going to put a semicolon and then i'm going to select this complete query and i'm going to execute it you can see one row affected so now i'm going to right click on this and going to select top 1000 rows so you can see the details right here id1 admin you can see the name contact number you can see you can see the email address you can see the password status and the rule so this is all things we have to do for now like related to this uh, okay so now we have to move over here back over here and here first we are going to write the code related to chorus actually so we have to move to this one app dot start so basically uh, why we need that actually so basically to connect from cross origin from other or uh, from different origin we are using this one uh, allowing this one actually so where what is this one new enable enable course attribute this one and it's uh, let me select the, uh, this one now uh, let me click over here and you can see we are get, uh, getting this option using system if i click over here you can see this one is added over here and like that and here in double quotes we have to put a star comma double quotes put a star and three times we need to do as same 
okay after that we have to put a semicolon and we have to write a config dot enable chorus and here we just need to pass that we have created and now if i try to connect with the backend api from uh, like angular react Vue, any from any other origin so we are able to connect if this two lines of the code is not there so it will give us related to cross origin error okay so let me like close this one now we have to move to the model this one models you can see right click on this click on add and we have to go to the new items and here we have to move to the data and we have to click on edio.net entity data model this one and here we have to change this to cafe entities this one let me copy this one and click on add okay and click on next and here actually we have to create a new connection so click on new connection and here actually we need to cancel this one for now just uh, go over here if you see this one this is our database server name so we have to connect click on connect an object and from here we can copy actually server name so we have to paste the server name over here let me paste it uh, once we paste it over here you can see the server or enter the database name so if you extend this one you are able to see all the data uh, database we have so click on cafe video click on ok and after that uh, we have to just uh, create this part cafe entities we have to write like this and after that we have to click next it will automatically add a connection string in our bib config you can see the options yeah i already checked this one so we don't need to check it again so we have to just click on next and after that we have to just move to the next and here it will retrieve all the tables which has been uh, in that particular database so you can see users table is only there so i'm going to click on this one and i'm going to uh let me also rename this to video model this one and i'm going to click on uh finish so it will create uh, it will take actually few seconds to create that one so we have to wait for few seconds and you can see it's loading right now so it will uh, basically again going to get all the like whatever the tables has been created it will going to create over here and models uh, it will create like id name those things it will create in this model okay so now you can see actually uh, I, you can see here it has been created if i go over here you can see the this one is a cafe entities right this one so this has been created and if i extend this one you can see the users is there you can see the user is there right id name contact number email password status rule all these things you can see over here and if i double click on this one you can see the ui visualization of this one can see right so after that we have to just close this one and we have to go to the controller actually right click on this controller click on add new items and then we have to move to the web uh, okay uh, we have to uh, uh, not here actually let me close this one right click on this uh, click on add and we have to move to the controller and from here we have to go through the web apis and here we need to write click on this one first one and click on add and here i'm going to write user controller click on add so it will create a file for us okay so just wait for a few seconds you can see if new file has been created so let me close these things and here we are going to write the route prefix first one so route prefix this one and the route pre prefix will be api slash user and after that we are going to import that uh, cafe model you can see this one entities so we are going to write a cafe entities we are going to import this one so if i double click on this one and if from whenever we click on over here you can see using cafe management system models you are going to import it from here you can see this one so we have imported it from here and here we are going to write db as equals to new cafe entities this one and then uh, you can see and after that we have to create a api so i'm going to write here public public 
and the first we're going to create for the sign up so i'm going to write here http uh, response at uh, basically whatever what type of response it will return for that i'm writing over here so response message it will return and sign up s should be capital sign up and here we also need to write the prefix uh, like that so what type of method is this will be http post method it will be and the route we have to also need to declare the route actually so route will be sign up this one sign up this one and it's giving us error because we are not returning anything till now so here we have to write like this try and here we have to write catch catch and here we have to write exception exception and e and if there is any exception occur in that case we need to return request request dot create response this one and the http response http sorry status code actually this one dot internal server error we are going to write like this and whatever the error we are going to get we are going to return that error okay and in the try block we have to write the actual like um, operations related to sign up so in the body we are also going to expect the like data so from from body we are going to get and the user this user we have to get the data so this user we need to import like this uh, in the that particular body we are going expecting these values okay so here uh, now we have to write like user object we are going to use and user obj we have created obj and here we need to write db dot users this one and after that dot where we are going to use first we are going to find that particular user which want to create the account that account is already exist like with that particular email address ex exist or not for that we are going to search it so here i'm going to write you dot you dot email is equal equal to two times only user dot email or not and after that we have to write here first or default this one so basically uh, it will get the data from this user from the body and it will going to find with where clause with this email, whatever the email address we have and it will going to return if the object if obj is a uh, user or obj is equal equals to null it means that the like account does not create it with that particular email address if yes in that case we have to return the error actually so so after that okay let me also write first else condition so else condition will be like this so return request dot uh, create response this one and here we need to write http status code dot bad request we have to return and after that we have to return a message so new and here we need to write message message and equals and in double quotes we have to write whatever the message you want to return so email already exist we need to return this message here you can see request http email address and here we have to just put a semicolon at the end of this line you can see error has been removed so now whenever we got the object right so like the particular email does not exist in that case what we need to do is we have to set some values like and from the ui uh let me move back over here so what from ui we are going to get the e name contact number email address and the password these two things we are not going to get a status and the rule by default whenever the user sign up in that case we have to make it as false and the rule will be always for the user right so we have to set those data so user role is equals to double quotes user 
and after that uh, user dot status we need to declare that one so status will be false 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 and after that we have to write db dot users users dot add and that particular user object we are going to pass that user and then we have to write db dot save changes and after that we have to return the message so request dot create response and in this http status code dot ok and after that we are going to return a new message so message and the message will be successfully registered this message we are going to return and at last of this line we have to put a semicolon and just need to save it so you can see like the sign up api is ready so it's time to test this api so let me right click on this project and debug and start new instance we have to click on it so as we need to test the like post method so we have to use the postman so i'm going to like you can have to install it on uh, this one so i, I already installed it so I, can, I will directly going to use this one so we have to just wait for a few seconds and we can copy this url actually and we have to just paste it over here first one and after that we have to change this method to post one and after that we have to copy this prefix so i'm going to copy this one let me paste it over here after that put slash and after that we also need to copy this sign up so this will be the particular method okay um like we can call it so sign up will be there right and after that uh, let me check out the services is up or running yeah it's up okay so now uh we have to change go to the body of this one and we have to change this to raw and we also need to change this to this one to json and here we need to write her name and name I'm going to write here btech days and after that we are going to write the contact number so contact contact number I'm going to pass the contact number so it will be like this so one two three zero and after that the contact number the next will be for email so double quotes and email and the email will be btech days at the rate gmail.com this is just a temporary uh, like dummy email address after that password and here we are going to pass the password so one two three i'm going to write so now i'm going to hit this api so i'm going to click on this one and you can see we are getting the message successfully registered so let me open the uh, this one and let me click on this one select top 100 you can see the beta digs you can see the contact number you can see the email and you can see the password is also there so you can see this one is false and the role you can see the user right so everything has been installed so if i try to hit it again so it need to be return the error you can see email already exists 400 bad request you can see the error right so if i try to hit it again it will return the same because we are going to check that particular email address exist in our database or not so if yes in that case we are going to return this error so it means that sign up api is working as expected so now it's time to work on the login api so let me stop the server and now we have to create a file over here so right click on this one and like we have to go to the add and new item and we have to create a class actually so general uh, okay so code and here you have to just write man token manager we have to write token manager we have to write here and then we have to click on add so it will create a class for us and here we have to going to create a secret key first one so public static string and we are going to write secret and basically this key is to like whenever we going to create a JWT token so for that we are going to use this token 
so uh, what is the use of gwt token actually to secure our apis actually so whenever the, any api is going to hit it will carry the gwt token and in the back end we are going to verify that token like it is the correct token which we have provided while login or not if it is not uh, if it is does not match or it, it is not correct so in that case we are going to return unauthorized or 401 status to that particular user okay so here we need to create a secret key so for randomly we can uh, enter like values so i'm going to write here randomly anything uh, it should be character or numbers and we, please make sure it should be the length will uh, like more than 50 otherwise maybe it will give uh, some error if it is less than 10 20 okay so i'm just write the random stuff over here you can see so make sure it should be 50 uh, because it, it will be some secure applications okay so after that we have to create a method over here so public static and it should return a string so after that we have to generate a token we are going to write like this and in this we are expecting a string type and the email address and whatever the role of that particular user we are expecting this one these two things and after that actually we need to uh, it's giving us error because we are not returning anything and we declare here a string okay after that we have to import uh, like symmetric security key this one if you double click on this one and if you click on over here you can see using microsoft identity model token click on it you can see this one we imported over here so after that here you have to write security key this one and after that new semantic security key this one we need to write and in this we need to do the encoding okay uh, not like this so encoding and dot u t f 8 okay double click on this one and just click over here so you can see using system dot text we need to import this one this one so after that utf9 dot git bytes we have to write like this and in this we are going to pass that secret key so secret key we need to pass and at last put semi column and after that we have to write a security security token descriptor this one we need to import and here we have to write descriptor and after that here we have to write new security token descriptor after that we have to create like this brackets and here we have to write here subjects and new claim claims okay uh, it should be not like this actually uh, we can also delete this part actually so let me delete this one and after that if i select this one if we gain to get the this to need, need to import using this one like this okay you can see this one is imported over here so now error has been removed after that here we need to write new and here we have to write like this and the brackets we have to and new claims this one and the claim claim types we have to write and the email we are going to pass and whatever the value we are going to get that one is email address so we are going to pass this one and after that we have to create new claim this one and the claim type we have to declare that type will be rule and whatever the value we have we are going to return that one and at last of this line we have to put a comma and we have to move to the next line let me and pin this one and let me show you in the single line actually after that we have to write here expiry so in this we have to just pass the date time whenever you want to like expire after uh, like after seconds after days like after minutes you can uh, configure according to after add month like how many times you want to like uh, make that token 
disable or like expire so i'm going to write her add hours i'm going to write her eight hours and after that signature credentials this one and it should be new signature credentials and here we need to write like this and after that here first we need to pass the security key which we have and after that uh, security algorithms this one dot h m a c s h a 265 signature we need to pass this one so it will uh, create the token according to it okay after that we have to put semicolon over here and after that we have to write g w t security security token handler we need to import this one so just double click on this one it will give options to like import you can see using system identity token GWT you can see it imported from over here so after that here we have to write handler and here we have to write new GWT token handler this one after that we have to write GWT security token this one and token sorry uh, my bad here we have to write token and then we have to create handler dot create gwt security token this one and in this we have to pass that descriptor this one and after that we have to return handler dot write token and whatever the token that one we have to just pass okay if we save this you can see the error has been removed because it will return that particular token so now now we have to again move to the user controller and we have to write the code to like uh, return the token so let me unpin this one solution and let me click over here now we have to move to the user actually as we already opened this one so now we have to move a little bit down over this one the bracket we are close okay over here so now here we need to write public and http response message uh it's exception sorry my bad request sorry response message message we need to import this one and the login method we need to call and form body sorry from body actually we need to import and user and user we are expecting okay and here we also need to write like that uh, this one so let me copy this one and paste it over here let me put some space over here and let me change your login and after that here we need to do some changes okay so now we have to first write try catch let me move a little bit up this one and try catch and here we have to write exception exception e and we have to return if any error occurs so return response sorry request request dot create response and here we need to write http status code dot internal server error and whatever the error is there we are going to return that particular error and now we are going to write the code in try block so here we are going to get the user credentials like a email address and the password only right so here we have to search on that basis so obj is equals to and here we need to write db dot users and after that here we need to write uh actually dot where uh and here we need to search actually so x sorry u and u dot uh, email we need to write and here we need to write user dot email we are going to find it 
search it actually and and u dot password this one is equal equals to u dot sorry user dot password this one if both match then we are going to uh, like find first or default this condition we need to write and if user obj is not equals to null in that condition we are going to execute this if condition and an else condition we are going to return actually an error message so return request request dot uh, create response create response and here we have to write http status code dot unauthorized this unauthorized error message and here we need to write new and here we have to write message so let me unpin this one again and here we need to write equals double quotes and here we have to write in correct user name or password we need to return this message and if in if condition we are going to change check if user obj sorry user obj this one dot status is equal equal equals to true in that condition we are going to return the token and in else condition we are going to return the a error message so first we are going to write for the error message so request dot create response and here we need to write http status code dot unauthorized unauthorized and here we need to write new message and here we need to write wait for admin approval we have to return this message actually okay and after that in if condition actually we have to return the actual token because this user uh, like whenever the user status is true and id password match in that case we are going to return a token with response uh, okay so request dot create response and http response uh, status code dot okay this one and new and here we have to create right token and equals and we need to import the token manager so if i click on it you can see the token manager will okay we already have the models uh okay uh it's imported from the token manager actually so token manager uh, manager dot generate token this one we need to call and here we need to write user obj this one dot email address we have need to pass that and after okay the bracket should be also there so let me move little bit right this one and uh, after that here we need to write user obj this one dot the whatever the rule of that particular user, user we need to pass after that we have to put semicolon you can see so whenever like user is like uh, credentials like email and password will be correct so we are going to uh, like uh, going to in over here and if the status is true in that case we are going to return the token if not we are going to return the error so let me open the solution explorer and let me run this application it try to test it out so let me open the postman again so let me copy this url okay let me postman open it again and paste over here let me change to post body raw and here we need to change to json and here we have to write like email and it should be in double quotes email and here we need to write uh, the email address we already have so btech days at the rate gmail.com and the password will be 123 so password and here we need to write 123 one two three so let me see the services is up or not yeah it's up so now we have to hit this one api 
email already exists okay we are hitting the sign up api so login we have to write login and let me try to hit it you can see we are getting 401 unauthorized waiting for admin approval so it means that it's able to authorize that one so let me change this to one over here so it will need to be returned incorrect username and password let's try it out you can see we are getting incorrect username and password so now we have to try with the correct credentials which having the active like um, your account so i'm going to write here admin and i'm going to write to hit the api now you can see we are getting a jwt token actually so let me copy this token and let me go to the jwt website actually and here we have to just write jwt and if i go over here down and here if i paste that token so after that we are able to see that email address you can see here you can see the role you can see the expiry and you can see the whatever all the details related to that token values you can see both the things actually email and role mainly we need and so let me move back over here so if i hit it again we are going to get another token like whenever the token has been created and you can see everything is working fine for the login so this is all about like uh, the login and sign up part of this user so related to this so i hope you guys like this video so please hit like and subscribe my channel